Hey guys, so about a year ago, I posted a series of Q&A videos. And I did that with the intention of kind of just like helping you guys to better get to know me and answer some of the questions that you've all been asking in a quick, simple way. Of course, here in video format, it's a lot quicker than replying to each one of you individually in the comment section. Some time has passed and we've gone from like, I think we were at about 25,000, maybe 30,000 subscribers at the time. Now we're closing in on 100K. We've got a lot of new people, a lot of new faces here on the channel. So I figured we'd do another Q&A. So all of the newcomers to the channel welcome uh, so all of you can get to know me as well a little bit better if you haven't checked out those earlier q a's with that being said i asked for your questions in a post here on my community tab on youtube as well in my instagram story over on ig so that's where i got the questions from and that's what i'm going to be answering today now let's just dive into it first question i'll be answering is do you listen to norwegian bands i can't really think of any like specific bands that i listen to from norway some have been shown to me and from what i've heard i dug shout out to albin and my discord server he's one of my patrons who definitely has shown me a couple i believe in some of our listening sessions so from what he's shown me i've enjoyed what i've heard but i don't really have any specific bands from norway on my spotify question number two why do you play with just one rack tom when you have two the answer to this is super simple it's just in metalcore having a big centered crash ride like i have all of these years super important for the genre just because a lot of bands also rep that same sort of symbol layout having a big maybe 20 21 inch crash ride right in the center Right now, as a lot of you guys probably already know, I'm using a Mino Polyphonic 21 inch ride, which really acts as a crash ride in a lot of ways for how I use it. And just having that symbol in the center, I like to call it my chorus symbol. Just having that guy in the center used in almost all the covers that I sort of play just because of the genre that I sort of play inside. Next question is, are you planning on getting more tattoos? And the answer is yes, definitely. Definitely, I plan on getting a lot more tattoos down the line. Those of you that do follow me on my socials know that I did just get my hand filled in. I have been talking about that for some time now as well. Ever since I did my tattoo tour video, I talked about the fact that I was just trying to sort of figure out what to get. I figured out what to get. I posted about it on my socials. And maybe if you guys want to see it, I'll do a video in the future talking about what I got on my hand and why I got it, that kind of thing. So maybe that'll come up down the line. Next question is, how are you? Do you feel happy right now? I just like this question. I mean, it was kind of open-ended and I just, yeah, the answer is yes. And I saw, I was like, oh, that's somebody like concerned for my well-being, I guess. So thank you for asking. And yes, I'm doing great. I'm I'm living a dream at this point. It's been a year since, well, it hasn't been a year yet. As of December 14th, it will be one year since I quit my full-time day job and I took on YouTube as my day job. And uh, and the last year has been an absolute dream. Watching this community sort of flourish and blossom has really, really been fulfilling. And, and every day I get out of bed lucky enough to be doing something that I really, really care about. So yeah, I'm having a blast. Thank you so much for asking. Next question is, have you ever tried to learn any other instrument or have you pursued vocals? The answer is absolutely. So I have played and taught guitar and piano alongside of drums. Then outside of that, when I was younger, for about a year, I took vocal lessons. I don't currently really practice any of those other disciplines. I pretty much just stick to the drums these days just because of how busy I am with getting content to you guys here on the channel. I'd like to pursue songwriting again more in the future, so I am working on guitar a little bit these days. Not as much as I'd like to be, but uh, slowly I'm sort of just reworking my schedule in a way that provides a little bit more time each day to get some hours on the guitar as well. Next question, another tattoo question. Are you going to get a sleeve on the other arm as well? The answer is yes. Eventually, I'll probably start to fill up my right arm as well. I don't have any immediate plans. I think I'm going to hold off a while on getting anything on the right side. I want to get some stuff done on my torso and my legs before I touch the right side of me. I also kind of want to continue this, what I have, and just sort of work into my shoulder and then over to my chest. So that's kind of what I have immediately planned for, uh, for tattoo appointments coming up in the future. Next question is, what is your favorite energy drink? I don't really drink a whole lot of energy drinks. I drink a ton of coffee. I take pre-workout before I go to the gym. And if I ever do need like a really sudden boost, maybe I'm on the road, long drive, something like that. Sometimes I'll grab a Red Bull, but that's about it for energy drinks. Next question is, what is your favorite album of all time? I don't know if I have necessarily a specific favorite. There's two that have really sort of left a lasting mark in me. The first is Reckless and Relentless by Asking Alexandria. And the second is Lost Together, Lost Forever by Architects. Next question is from one of my Instagram followers and he is brand new to the drums and he asked... How important is rudiments when first learning the drums? That's super simple. Rudiments are number one. They're the most, probably the most important thing you can do when first learning the drums. Trying to learn the drums without really dialing in some rudiments is kind of like trying to learn to speak English before learning the alphabet. Rudiments lay the basic foundation of everything you're going to do at the drum set, both on your hands and feet, and they are your number one priority when stepping into the drum set. In the clip that is on the screen for you right now, that roll that I played really fast there, 
there. That was actually a paradiddle diddle. So that's right, left, right, right, left, left. I played it twice in two groups of six. So as you can see there, you can't always tell that the drummers are utilizing rudiments, but rudiments come up in everything you will do. Next question is, do you ever get tired of listening to metal? And if you do, what other genres do you listen to? Over the years, lots of my friends that I used to nerd out with about different metal bands and stuff going on in the metal scene have kind of moved on to other genres and matured out of it, I guess. And I just never, that's never happened to me. I've never had an issue listening to metal every single day, or I don't know, at least it being the most dominant genre in my life. Maybe I'm just trapped in my scene phase forever, which is what it feels like at this point. But I just love metal and I love especially metalcore, the subgenre that I play and that we celebrate here the most on the channel, of course, that you all probably enjoy. That's why you're watching this video. I just never get sick of it. I almost always listen to metal if I'm listening to music. I do step out of metal into other genres from time to time. I like newer progressive jazz a lot just for the instrumentation. Animals as Leaders kind of opened, Matt Garska and Animals as Leaders really opened the door to some newer forms that I've been listening to, uh, newer forms of music to me at least that I've been getting into and they're all a little bit more technical. But then on the lighter side of things, I do listen to some pop. I like, I don't, don't get me wrong. I have Katy Perry, Justin Bieber on my Spotify. I go to pop sometimes, not as often as metal though. I'm usually just kind of, see the thing about metal with me too is like, I really stick to a certain era of the genre. Like the whole like early days of Ask Alexandria, Of Mice and Men, The Devil Wears Prada, um, Seosin. Just the bands that really entertained the hell out of me when I was in high school and, uh, and I was younger. Those are really what I listen to still to this day so, so often. That's a bit of a longer answer, but yeah, I never get sick of metal and I do listen to other genres, just not a whole lot. Mostly I just focus on, uh, on what's going on inside metalcore. Next question is what kind of drumsticks do you play? I only play Vicverth drumsticks. I started on Vicverth's 5B, then I was on 2B at one point. I tried the rock and the metal stick by Vicverth. Uh, I spent a matter of months, uh, I think I was a couple years on metal and about a, maybe six months on rock before discovering metal. Metal is just like a longer version of the rock stick. And then after that, I discovered the Thomas Lang Signature Series Vicverth stick and I've been on that stick for the last two years and I don't think I'll ever switch off anything else. The balance on that stick is just cannot be matched by any other stick that at least I've played for the style of playing that I play. The next question is, are you a self-taught drummer or did you take lessons? I, uh, I took lessons very, very briefly. I'm mostly self-taught. I, I learned like the paradiddle, double stroke roll, and then some basic grooves out of like realistic rock and books like that, uh, which is a great book, by the way. I'm still teaching out of that book to this day. So if you're new to the drums, grab that. But anyways, briefly took lessons. And then most of my progression at the kit was actually because of YouTube videos. I think the biggest point, the biggest turning point for me was, uh, was when I was for the first time able to learn a song. I then turned to Luke Collins covers and I learned a lot of his covers. My earliest covers were all covers that he had done that I just learned watching him play on his YouTube channel. And my learning off of other YouTube drummers is what inspired my how-to series and why I take the time to break down songs for you guys. Because I try and go about breaking those songs down in that series in the way that I found was the most advantageous for me when I was learning songs in the beginning. So yeah, I'm mostly self-taught, but I did do about six months briefly in the beginning when I was a lot younger. The next question is, how are you feeling lately in your new routine versus your 2 a.m. wake up routine? So if you are newer to the channel, I do have a video that I posted about a year ago. Uh, I think we're coming up on a year now, actually, another couple months and it'll be a year where I talked about at the time back then I was waking up at 2 a.m. and going through working out, working on a cover, editing videos, updating my socials, doing all the things that I needed to do to get done for the channel. I was doing those things 2 a.m. to 8-ish a.m. before I was going to work and I sort of broke all that down in that video. I'll include the video in the description below. I don't do that anymore. Ever since December 14th of 2018, I have been full time, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and my schedule has been all over the place since then because I'm taking on different projects. I'm doing session work. I'm doing different types of YouTube videos and my editing schedule is all over the place. I don't really have a everyday schedule just yet. I'm very close to sort of having one ironed out that I like that I've been working with for the last couple weeks. And I will do a video in the future of what my new daily routine looks like. Maybe I'll even do like a day in the life if you guys want to see it, request it below. We'll talk about that. To answer the question, excuse me, I'm going on a bit of a rant. I feel much better. I realized that I was not getting enough sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that four to six hours a night is just not enough when you want to progress as a creative individual, uh, as somebody who has fitness goals and spends a lot of time in the gym and enjoys personal fitness. Um, so yeah, ever since uh, I feel like both mentally and physically, I feel a lot better on this new schedule. Now, having said that, I would definitely have not done anything differently. Because of that 2 a.m. schedule, I managed to get the channel to a point where I could do this full time and I could relax and I could take care of myself a little bit more and worry about my own personal health a little bit 
bit more. And because of that, like you have to make some sacrifices to make it anywhere. The sleep and the social life and all the other stuff I gave up at that time got me to where I am today. So I'm really stoked that I went through it and I'm here now and I can kind of relax a little bit more. Uh, we're still pushing forward, but I relax a little bit more compared to then for sure. Next question is, what has been your favorite track learned on drums? And uh, this is an easy one because I do have a favorite. It's my favorite cover that I've posted and it's my favorite track that I've ever learned on drums. I don't know why. I just really, really enjoyed learning Dying to Heal by Architects off of their latest record, Holy Hell. That cover has gotten like, I think it's at like 50,000 views. So it's a little bit lower compared to uh, some of the recent videos that I've been posting, but I just love that cover to death. The song just feels so good to play. Everything is just phrased really, really comfortably. I really enjoyed learning that song. I learned it really quickly because of how much I enjoyed it. I just kind of like dug into it and it was only like two or three days I had the song down, posted the cover. When I go and watch my own videos, there's only a couple videos that I really go and watch that I'll like go and repeat watch. And that's definitely one of them. I really like watching myself jam that song. It's just a really great song to watch on drums. And I haven't seen a whole lot of other covers on YouTube. So I like checking myself out, play that song. <laughs> All right, next question is, do you ever plan on doing any tours or personal meet and greets in the future? And the answer is, yeah. I mean, there's lots of drummers these days that have been doing these like clinic tours, stuff along those lines where they've been going out and playing shows as themselves. I mean, the biggest who's doing that right now is Luke Holland, of course. So yeah, I mean, down the line, that's always something that I would, I don't have any personal goals set right now of doing something in that direction. I'm trying to just grow the platform at this point and see where this takes us, but it's not out of the cards. I can totally see myself setting something up like that in the future. So the next Next question is, if you could be the drummer for any band, who would it be and why? This one is so easy and most of you can already probably guess it, especially if you've been here for a while. Definitely Architects. I know that Dan Searle's not leaving that band anytime soon and that would never be an actual possibility. But just as I said in the answer a couple questions ago, my favorite song to play is Dying to Heal and my favorite band to cover is definitely Architects. There's something about the drums that Dan writes and the style of music that that band plays just feels the best for me. Dan is like, I guess, the closest drummer well, the closest that I come to impersonating another drummer, I guess. In the, my early days, it was definitely Luke Holland, especially with his stick tricks. I mean, I don't do stick tricks as well as him, but uh, I started practicing them and playing around with them because of watching his videos. And I feel like my early style was kind of moving more towards him, even though at the time I wasn't really that good. But later on, when I really got into covering Architects, I started with uh, with Gravedigger. And then after that, it was like song after song. I think the second one I did was, uh, was the single off of All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us, which was... Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. A match made in heaven. That's what it was. I had to look it up. I, that's why there was a jump cut. <laughs> but a match made in heaven, I think, was the second. And then I kind of went on from there. I did a few songs off of All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us. And then, I, of course, a lot of you know that I've covered several songs off of Holy Hell. And there's something just about his playing. I can really sink into it and get into those tracks. I just really love it. So it would definitely be architects for how good those songs feel to play. The next question is, if you could go back, would you still get gauges? So I'm assuming this is uh, referring to the my stretched ears. And uh, the answer is, Definitely yes. I mean, I like them. I like the way they look on me. I think they suit me. I think it really kind of works with just my look just because of long hair. I think that really helps. They're not like super in your face all the time. It'd be different if I wore my hair up a lot, but I don't. Usually I just keep it down. But with the way I wear my hair and my look, I just feel like it works with me. The other reason why too is like, I don't know. I feel like when it comes to like body mods and tattoos and the stuff that I've done at least with myself and that people do inside of the metal scene for, especially for the musicians, it's kind of like if you work in an office building going to work every day in a suit and tie you know it's, it's just part of our uniform as a as a metal musician or as an artist in the scene or even just a listener of the scene to identify as part of this it's kind of like just your suit and tie it's just part of kind of being in this subculture and i like that it relates me to this culture because i really love this community and i think that metal fans i think that you guys my my community personally but also just like metal as a broad it's just usually there's such great people involved with the bands, with shows. It's always like I'm coming home when I'm going to a venue or I'm meeting a new band for the first time, maybe doing some studio work or whatever it is. It just, it feels so at home. And uh, and the fact that I have, you know, a couple tattoos and my ears stretched and it just feels right for me. It's kind of my place in the world. So I definitely would not change that at all. Next question is what kind of heads do you use? So on my snare drum, I've used for a long time now, a Evan Onyx black head. On my toms, I use EC2s. And on my kick drum, I use the EMAD 2. So all by Evans. Next question is, what is your favorite jelly bean? <laughs> 
<laughs> Next question is, what is your favorite jelly bean flavor? I don't really eat a whole lot of jelly beans, but when it comes to like candy, anything that has a color related to the flavor, I always go with blue. So I'm a blue Powerade guy. I just like blue, like blue raspberry stuff. So I guess it would be blue. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll roll with that. Thanks for the awesome question. Next question is, do you watch any sports? So growing up as a kid, uh, sports were a huge, huge part of my life. My parents had a rule in my house that I had to be doing something. So I started at a very young age in soccer. And then I went, proceeded to play uh, basketball at one point, baseball at one point, hockey for a couple of years, uh, football. And I did it martial arts for a while. I was in Taekwondo for a large part of my childhood, but I stopped at football. I really fell in love with football. My dad was in football for the better part of 35 years. Uh, he coached and played at a whole plethora of different levels here in Canada. So football, I watched for a while, but lately I just don't have time to do a whole lot outside of the channel. I find myself most days after I'm done working on whatever it is that I have on the go, I'll just sort of maybe play an hour or two of video games with the, with the patrons who hang out on my Discord server and then call it a night. So I don't really follow sports uh, anymore in the last year or so, but up until about 2016 maybe, I did follow football for sure. Do you ever think in the future that VSTs and plugins will overtake physical instruments? Uh, I mean, in a lot of ways, they kind of already have, right? Because like the whole genre of EDM is just Ableton on a MacBook. So I guess you could say, yeah, in certain places and certain genres. Will that happen in metal? Maybe, but at the end of the day, the reason why I go to a show is to connect with an artist on stage, is to connect with a human being, a physical person who has fears and doubts and emotions and thoughts and anger. And I want to experience them playing the music as much as I'm okay with a little bit in the tracks for sure, especially considering we have the technology. I mean, why not use it to make the show a little bit more immersive, of course. But having said that, like, I don't think in metal, just because of the nature of how metal musicians express themselves, I don't think that it'll ever be replaced in our genre. So the next question is, who are some of your dream line check guests? For sure, uh, Luke Holland, I really want to ask him. I just haven't taken the time to try and figure out how to approach him yet, but that'd be really cool to have him on. I would love to talk to Jared Dines. I'm a huge fan of his channel. And let me think, outside of that, I mean, I would definitely like to sit down with Alex Rudinger. He's awesome. He's one of my favorite drummers. There's a few drummers that I sort of start every day with. So I'll sit down with my coffee and the first thing I'll do is pull up their channel and see if they have any new videos. And if they don't, I'll rewatch some of the old ones. And those are for sure Annika Niles, Anoop Sastry, and Alex Rudinger. Those right now are my three that I sort of have on the go. Partially just because of their consistent upload schedules, especially Alex and Anoop. Those guys are uploading a lot and their content's awesome. I will include links to all of those drummers, their channels in the description. You can check them out. If you could play any other instrument of your choice, which would it be and why? Definitely guitar. I would love to be a lot better at guitar. I started on guitar before drums, actually. When I was super, super young, my parents got me like a really small little kid drum set and acoustic guitar. And I decided I wanted to play the acoustic guitar first. I did a couple lessons and I decided music was not for me. A couple years later, I came back into music. And now we're talking super young here. So I didn't really decide that music was not for me. I kind of just was a kid and was bouncing around into stuff, right? Because like it wasn't really an active decision as much as I don't want to practice guitar. I want to go outside and play with friends. But when I, when I sort of sat down at the drum set and got the release of banging the hell out of it, it definitely left a lasting impression on me that is still there to this day, of course. So definitely guitar. And the reason why guitar is because I would love to be a much better songwriter. I think that if I wasn't on YouTube, that's what I would probably be focusing on the most is just learning how to songwrite. I do session work for artists and I can write drums and I can sit down and collaborate with some of the songwriters that I've worked with over the years and write music with them. But my ear for pitch is not as good as it should be to be able to sort of sit down and write a song by myself. I can put together the structure and the flow and the tempo and the time signature and all of the things from the drummer rhythmic standpoint I can handle for sure because that's my job as a drummer. But the the melodic side of things, I'm just lacking in. I can put pitches together, but really coming up with catchy melodies and sort of unique chord progressions, I struggle with. So I guess, yeah, uh, long story short, definitely guitar so that I could be a better songwriter. Next question is, who is your top three favorite bands right now? I'm going to assume that means like, as in like bands that are releasing stuff at the moment, like right now. And if that's the case, then I would definitely have to say Motionless and White is probably my favorite just because of how much I enjoyed Disguise. I really love that record. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I really got into it. I posted a lot of reaction videos for that record. I was listening to, I was listening to Another Life and the the Smoke track. What's it called? What's it called? Let me think. Holding On To Smoke. I was listening to Another Life and Holding On To Smoke on repeat every single day for I guess about a month after that record came out. So definitely their number one. I like the new As I Lay Dying stuff a lot. So they might be number two, probably number two. I really dug Ammo. So maybe Bring Me The Horizon. I think those would be my three right now. So Ammo, Motionless and White. Sorry, Bring Me The Horizon, Motionless White, As I Lay Dying. I guess those would be it for like this
this year. The other stuff that's been released so far haven't been as stoked on. I mean, don't get me wrong, this has been an insane year for metal. There's so much new music out, but nothing's moved me like those three records. And I know I'm gonna get some flack for the fact that I included Ammo in that, because I guess it's kind of more pop now, but I don't know, they were a metalcore band originally, so probably those three bands. <laughs> Next question is, how many years have you been playing the drums? I'm really not too sure. I can't remember when I started. Uh, I think I was, like I wasn't double digits. That's what I know. I think I might've been like nine or 10. I'm 24 years old now. So I guess you could say it might've been earlier to be honest. I think it was probably earlier. I always go by when I started playing World of Warcraft and then subtract like a couple years back from that. So I started World of Warcraft at 11. I think it was at least three or so years back from that. I don't know, I'm making this answer way too, uh, way too complicated. I started when I was, I guess nine, and I'm 24 now, so about that long. <laughs> Next question is, do you rely on Patreon merch and YouTube sales or do you have other streams of revenue on top of those to support yourself? This is kind of like a two part of the second half is do you find it difficult making money on your own? I do not rely solely on YouTube, Patreon and merch. Those are the majority of where I get my income from though. I'm not gonna go too, too crazy into my personal finances on the internet, <laughs> but uh, I do have some stuff outside those three, despite those three being right now probably the dominant places that I get some money coming in from. And uh, and the other ones are really simple. They're just like stuff that pops up on the side. So uh, so session work definitely helps. I work with maybe two or three artists a month doing like just some drum writing or tracking for bands that need maybe like an EP or some singles. They want me to uh, be featured on a track, which is cool. And I work with guys all over the place just remotely. Uh, so that brings in some extra money on the side. And, uh, and then yeah, whatever else I can sort of come up with. It's it's all about being creative. So this kind of will go into the second part of it, which is, is it hard? It's not hard. I mean, everything is hard until it's not, right? Like in the beginning, yeah, it was very, very difficult. I'm not going to lie. I mean, everything worth doing is difficult. So it was, it was difficult, but it's just piece by piece. Every day you wake up, you try the next thing, you know? So every day you, you set the goal and you just sort of etch away at it. I want to get a Patreon. Okay, so that's the goal. And then you, how do I do it? You go and check out everybody that has a Patreon in the metal scene who's making YouTube videos. And then you just see what, look at what they do. How much do their tiers cost? What are their benefits? You start putting it all together and then you start thinking about who you are or who I am in this case and how I sort of would work in the platform based on what those other people are doing. And then you just, okay, Patreon's done. You know, you spend the weeks that it takes, Patreon's done. Now on to the next thing, right? I just got good at it because I just kept at it. It's just consistency. Everything is difficult. Like I already said, everything is difficult till it's not. And as long as you're consistent, eventually it will not be difficult. So right now, no, it's not difficult for me. It's, it's very habitual at this point, which is good because I can sort of relax, be a little bit more comfortable, take care of myself mentally and physically. And, uh, and yeah, like I said earlier in this, uh, in this video, I definitely am at a really good place now compared to where I was earlier in the year. And I feel like there's good things on the horizon. So I'm stoked on all of it. And, uh, no, it's not difficult. As long as you put your mind to it, you're consistent and you really mean it. Next question is kind of a silly one, but it came up so many times. Um, I'm shouting out the users on the screen. As you've noticed, this was one of the users who asked this. I'm not going to include all of them, but so many of you want to know what's up with my hair. So the question is, what is your daily hair routine? So honestly, like I don't do a whole lot to my hair. I use two products. I use Axe Peace Styling Wax stuff. I don't know. It's, it comes in a little green tin. And then I use like a Tresemme hairspray. That's it. I get out of the shower. I don't use heat. I don't blow dry or anything. I'll get out of the shower and I'll come and like maybe answer some emails while it air dries. Then I'll go and I'll put in wax, a lot of it. Like I use the Mac wax to kind of like mold it into the positioning that I want it. And then when it's there, I just hairspray it in place. And then I don't wash it for like another three or four days. So I'll go every three days or so I'll wash my hair. Four days, I'll wash my hair. And in between, I don't do anything. I literally just get out of bed in the morning. And as long as you put enough wax, as long as I put enough wax in like the first day, it kind of still has a little bit of hold. And then your, your own sort of like grease gets in it and it just kind of like styles itself because like the look that I'm going for is like I just got out of bed so I'll just get out of bed and it'll be done you know <laughs> like anyways yeah so that's what I do with my hair all right comment below maybe I'll do like a quick like joke video like five minutes where I'll like show off how I do my hair real quick it, there's nothing special to it really it comes down to just having like a good stylist who's going to hook you up with a haircut that you can style easy because that's kind of what I have more than anything it's just that like the couple people that I go to who do my hair who will cut it they just cut it like with lots of layers in a way that once I throw the wax in like it's going to look like this after I'm done with the wax or whatever. So that's that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see like a video and we can maybe, maybe 
Maybe talk about that more in the future. <laughs> Next question is, do you have any wrist or body pains from drumming? The answer is, yeah, I've had a ton over the years. I have absolutely none now though. On the screen for you is the thumbnail to hands episode. I can't remember, but I'll include the video in the description. And it's, uh, it's me and Lindsay breaking down my stretches. So I have a personal stretching routine that makes sure that I do not get any physical pains. Now that's not true. I'm kind of lying because I do sometimes the day after a cover, wake up with some neck pains, especially if it's a song that I've really enjoyed. I'm head banging a lot. I'll wake up with like, a little bit of a sore neck, but nothing crazy within a day or two that's gone. It's kind of just like physical workout pains, like lactic acid buildup, whatever it flushes out, no big deal. But for wrist, back, anything that's sort of like long term, I do have that video with the stretching. Check that out in the description below. It breaks down what I went through, all the pain, all the braces I had to wear, literally wrist braces because of the difficulties I was experiencing because of bad playing technique, all kinds of stuff. Check that out, description below, especially if you were dealing with pain on your own. So let's move on to the next question. So, next question is what was the first band you ever? listen to I'll answer this twice the first band I ever listened to was good Charlotte I discovered uh, their music video for the track the anthem back when I was like in grade one or grade two so like six seven years old and at the time I just fell in love with that band and then that introduced me to like simple plan and some 41 and Green Day and the whole pop punk era at the beginning of the 2000s and I got really really heavy into that before moving into metal and the first metal band I ever listened to was a band called disturbed I'm sure a lot of you know of that band and then the second metal band was a band called divine heresy, which actually I just actually met up. Well, I didn't personally meet up, but I met because I bumped into him. Dino from that band, who's also, I think he's the guitar guitarist from Fear Factory as well. I saw him at a show in LA when Lindsay and I were down there. It was super, super cool. I walked up to him, shook his hand and I was like super starstruck. And I was like, yo, Dino, like you got me into this genre, man. Like you're so awesome. I don't know. It was like crazy starstruck moment for me because this was as a kid, I really worshiped him on guitar and I really, really worshiped Tim Young, which was their drummer back in the day. who's just like a crazy fast sort of blast beat drummer. And then I sort of worked from that level of heavy, which to me was pretty heavy. I mean, to me, even now it's still pretty heavy. That's like the heaviest I'll really go. And then I sort of worked backwards and then eventually discover bands like Ask Alexandria, Day to Remember, uh, Escape the Fate, and that whole like post hardcore slash metalcore era that came for me after that in the like the late early 2010s, late whatever, sort of that time period. But yeah, so the first band ever, Good Charlotte. The last question in this video that I'm going to answer in today's Q&A is uh, as followed. And this was, there was no particular order here so it was just the order that I kind of came across these questions and wrote down but uh but the last question for today is how important is it to own a quality double kick pedal it's extremely extremely important there's there's things you can cheap out on at the drum set like you can buy really cheap cymbals for your first like three or four years and have no problem because who cares what they sound like you're learning the drums it doesn't really matter you can still practice good technique on cheap cymbals it doesn't affect you same with the drums you can buy cheap drums like really cheap shells for $400, $500 kit and you can learn on that no problem. In fact, it's probably a better idea because you're going to make a lot of mistakes with your hardware and your gear in the early years. At least I did. And you want to break cheap stuff. You don't want to start on a brand new, really expensive kit. So you can cheap out on the shells. You can even cheap out on the cymbals. The hardware, I would try to aim for like middle of the line. So like your cymbal stands, you don't want cymbal stands like falling. You don't want cymbal stands like collapsing or any issues while you're practicing with them moving around. So try and get like middle of the line cymbal stands. You don't need DW9000 hardware fresh out of the gate to learn drums. You really don't. But try and get like maybe Tamar Road Pro stuff, stuff that's like middle of the line budget because that stuff's gonna hold up for a while and it's not crazy expensive. It's great for a beginner. Having said all that, you can't cheap out on the kick pedal. I'd say that the kick pedal is probably the thing you wanna spend the most amount of money on. The reason why is because your kick pedal is an extension of your feet and your legs. So if you're serious about drums and you're serious about double kick and you wanna do this long term or maybe you want a career in this, start on a good kick pedal. It's gonna save you time in the long run. You're gonna get used to a better feeling motion in your practice of rudiments and, and different exercises. So that's gonna directly affect how you progress in your feet. I strongly recommend every beginner that the money that they sink into the drum set should go into the kick pedal. And then the other stuff doesn't really matter until, the other stuff doesn't really matter until you want good sound. If you're gonna record or go play shows, then you can start investing in higher quality gear. But until that point, it, it's for practicing, you can practice and get good on pillows. It's not mandatory to have all DW 9000 hardware and a DW performance whatever or super 
super superstar classic whatever kit or you know what I mean like full Zildjian A custom or K custom or Minel Byzance. You don't need any of that until you want to sound good in either a stage or in a studio. But and now I know I'm rambling. Get the good quality kick drum out the gate. Now that's the last question for today. I really hope you guys all enjoy this video. I wanted to sort of give you a chance to get to know me a little bit better, especially for all of the newer subscribers because we've added a couple of them over the last year, which has blown my mind. At the beginning of the year, I dropped a vlog where I talked about some New Year's resolutions I had made and all the goals that I had planned for this year. And I've checked off quite a few of them. There's still a couple on that list that, uh, that I got to get to. Maybe we'll talk about that in another video down the line. But one of the things that I said was, and this was probably the most important in that video, was the fact that I really want to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2019. And we're at like, I think at the time of filming this video, we're at like 91 or 90, we're closing in on 92,000 right now. So it's absolutely blown me away the amount of support. And I cannot thank you guys all enough for all the love that you've shown me here on YouTube. So thank you to the community. Huge, huge thank you to all the people who support me on Patreon and continue to help me make videos and be here and doing this for you. And in closing, you can support me on Patreon. You can check out my merch link in the description below. You can connect with me further at all of my social media pages that are on the screen for you right now. And as always in the description below, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed and I will see you all very soon with something new.